Welcome to another episode of Age of Geek Podcast. I am Colin. I'm Robert. And with us is James Estrada. James! Hello. What's up, how, James? Oh, not much. You know, just got a message to want to talk about Star Wars, and I always want to talk about Star Wars. So uh, here Star I am. This is the Wars. best thing ever to talk about. Oh, so good. Especially when we've got that Ahsoka Live action oh. series coming up. That uh, so happens to be. I I know it's my favorite cartoon. I think it's yours too, right, James? The uh, for the Rebel series. Oh yeah, yeah. I actually a couple weeks ago I started rewatching it again for like this is the fiftieth, sixtieth time. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's not a habit. It's cool. It's fine. Yeah, you know, fine. listen, like they say, like people like with depression rewatch the same shows to like feel comfort and stuff. Let's not forget, I am severely <laughs> depressed, so I watch it all the time. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I, you know, I've but... literally probably watched it, I think, three or four times now, twice by myself, twice with my with my son. We started doing um, every night before bedtime. Yeah. We would, we get in bed, get ready, and he's just like, "Can we watch Rebels?" I'm like, all right. <laughs> so we'd watch a quick episode, which would turn into two or three episodes, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finally that's, go to bed. That's how my kid and I used to watch it when, like, the first season came out, and they had the Disney XD app. So this is pre pre dating Disney oh, Plus. Yeah. But yeah, we would watch it every night before bed, and then. Uh, I got all the Blu-rays, and then Disney Plus became a thing, and I was like, oh, I don't have to take out discs anymore, so I can just have this on all the time. Wow. I do not have that experience with my girls yet. Maybe that'll be an inroad to a little more Star Wars for them for me, but I have watched some Rebels. I have not finished the series, but I did enjoy it, and uh, I am looking forward to the Ahsoka series as well. And did you end up watching um, uh, Clone Wars Season 7 when they released that, Robert? I did not. Clone Wars hit at a time for me. It was just like, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not watching anything. <laughs> you haven't seen the final season yet. I have not. Oh. Ooh, dude, you got to. That, uh, oh. At least the last three episodes. Spoilers. It is some of the best, like, <laughs> right? It is some of the best animated cinematics I've seen in my life. Yeah. The last episode is pure, just genius. Okay. And all I have to say is if you haven't seen, like, anybody watching or listening, like, if you haven't seen the last season of Clone Wars, the fact that there's an Ahsoka live action series is pretty much a spoiler. I mean, even Rebels technically is a spoiler. So totally, if if you don't if you don't watch Clone Wars, totally fine, totally cool. Watch watch the last season at least, or the last couple episodes to to really kind of get into the mind of Ahsoka and where she was at when um, when she last departed. Because at the you know at the end of seasons, well, we'll we'll get into that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> um, so let's, I mean, let's, let's just jump in. Let's, let's talk, let's start off with, with Clone Wars Ahsoka. Um, Robert, since, since you've got some, some good time there, do you want to, you want to kick us off with just kind of a brief synopsis of Ahsoka? Wow. Uh, well, let's go with, um, I, wow, I just blinked what her, what her race was. That's great. It's not, yeah. I'm not going to try to remember now. Twilight, thank you. I'm just like I'm looking at it, going, nope, nope, nope. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she was uh, Anakin Skywalker's Padawan, and oh look, there we go. Uh, and uh, because of her feistiness and her attitude, Anakin was given to calling her Snips. Um, and. Uh, yeah, as you can see from the slide there, the Colin is so <laughs> lovely provided for us. I, I went a little, a little overboard. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not going overboard. It's not going I, overboard. I pulled it's, a Robert. Wow. 
there's a name for that now. Great. Thank you. <laughs> well, when your first episode that you come on to our show with is uh, is talking about uh, black superheroes, and you literally have a full deck for presentation. Like you've now secured. <laughs> Wow. I, but I had that deck already. I had most of that deck already. It doesn't matter. It I just enhanced it a bit. You put time in it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Great. I, that's, that's, I'm never going to live that down now. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, and we come to see, I mean, we follow Ahsoka and Anakin throughout their uh, adventures, merry misadventures um, in Clone Wars. And she appears again later, kind of, in Rebels. And I'm sure we will get to that at some point as well. Yeah. And then she was seen most recently in, and, I'm, and I conflate the two because they went on concurrently. So it was either The Mandalorian or The Book of Boba Fett um, as an older more more mature or less rash Jedi or force user I guess would probably be a better way of putting it yeah she doesn't really have a faction um cause, cause after um season 6 in Clone Wars um there she was accused basically of uh, bombing the temple yeah bombing the Jedi temple um and I mean, she was she was basically completely chased out of Coruscant, um, or or I think she didn't she escape to like the uh, what do they call it there uh, the under realms? Oh shoot, what is um, it? Been so long since I've seen it's those like people. under realms or something like that. Um, but basically, she's she's now in like the lower cities of Coruscant hiding out, um, trying to figure out who she is. Ultimately, she's she's cleared, um, but she decides to leave the Jedi Order um, because no one believed her. No one fought for her, truly. Um, and the, they said it was a test. Yeah. The whole thing, like when they're like, oh, hey, we screwed up. But guess what? It's a test. You passed. <laughs> it's like you could be nope, a Jedi again. Not a test I want. So she leaves, and I, I assume at this point she's kind of considered like a gray Jedi. Although it's gray Jedi isn't really like a, a canon. A it's canon not just the canon. Yeah, because because well, is Knights of the Old Republic. Considered canon, the video legends. game. Legends. It's considered legends. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because one of the Jedi in that is is a gray Jedi. Um, yeah, I th- I think anything prior to Disney yeah. video games, all that stuff is legends. So. Okay. Well, said this. So yeah, she's more kind of that gray Jedi type of appeal right now, where she doesn't really. Have a faction, but she, if she had to pick, I would assume she's more a part of like the Rebel Alliance. So right she's now. neutral good. Yep. Neutral good. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Um, but I hate to be that nerd. Uh, she's not Twi'lek, she's a uh, Togruta. What? Oh, yeah. Her. Colin just leading me no. straight. You're right. Her, <laughs> oh, what Legu. do you call it? The her, yeah, her look tendril. Is different. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Sorry, That's I didn't right. want to be no, that no, 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 nerd. No. But thank you for okay. thank you for making it's sure okay. that we had the accurate information. Colin. I appreciate that. It is my fault. <laughs> I let everyone astray. I'm sorry. I it happens. I should have known. Thank but honestly, I think. Famous, James. <laughs> I think when Ahsoka first came like into Clone Wars, though, a lot of people thought she was a Twi'lek. Um, oh, probably. And I think it's a big, uh, it's a big thing that people still kind of 
get wrong every now and then when they are talking about Ahsoka. Yeah. And so it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, just point of fact. Nope. Awesome. Yep. Thank you for clearing <laughs> it up. Yeah, I think you're right. The last time that we that we saw her, Robert was uh, was in Book of Boba Fett. Um, and which is weird that she's still just like sitting here hanging around Luke Skywalker, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Jedi, but you know, I'll, I'll she's sit Je- here and hang she's around Jedi Luke a bit. <laughs> well, I think she kind of feels responsible for Luke um, because of the connection that she had with Anakin. Yeah, and you know, she got to know him as Anakin where Luke had, what, five minutes with him as Anakin? <laughs> yeah. So she's kind of like his living history book. Oh, yeah. For, for sure. like, all of Anakin's Can stuff. Can actually so he give him, like, some good memories to yeah. wash out all the the death that Darth Vader has plagued upon the, <laughs> yeah. the, the universe. Well, and it's kind of, it's kind of funny because... Uh, he has two Luke has two people in his life that do that with Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. Like now that we see with Ahsoka. Yeah. Because Obi-Wan watches over him because he feels responsible for Anakin becoming Vader and Ahsoka feels responsible that she wasn't there to stop him from turning to the dark side. And I think that through a lot of uh, Ahsoka's life, you, especially after she realizes who Vader is, uh, you get a sense that she feels like if she would have stayed in the Jedi order, he would have stayed good. He wouldn't have turned to the dark side. Yeah. Which I don't know. Uh, I, I think the one thing that could have, could have maybe have helped is actually in a deleted scene in uh, uh, revenge of the Sith, um, which uh, has, um, who was it? Um, Obi Wan and um, was it? Was he talking it? Oh no! It's been so long since I've seen it. Um, but basically, Obi Wan was like confessing that like he's known all along that Anakin, um, you know, always had this relationship with her, right? Yeah. But he was he was always putting it in the back of his head and, and thinking, well, if this is the one thing that makes Anakin happy, then I want him to have that, right? Right. Um, but if he could have come out in some way and, like, let him know, like, I'm here for you, like, I get this, um, especially because uh, a lot of people reference, like, his Obi-Wan's relationship with... Uh, or quote unquote relationship. Uh, what's what's her name? It was in Clone uh, Wars. Satine. Yeah, it was Satine. Um, and and thought that there was some kind of relationship there, and that her son was actually like Ben. Also Obi Wan's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I if if there was something that could have saved i think it was relating to that where he could have then just come out and said to you know obi-wan hey i'm really struggling with this right like that's so I, much like what anakin. do i do so much like anakin yeah except it's yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this the anakin thing i've heard tonight if it was so open but no no so sad <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I, I mean, Ahsoka has easily become probably one of the more favored characters in the Star Wars universe. I mean, for sure, she's she's had the most most growth, probably the most screen time in it in the animated sense now of any other character, and then coming on to live action, um, you know, she's shown so much growth coming from. From a Padawan to where her skills now are more, you know, towards a master. Um, 
although on a unofficially um <clears throat> and so ahsoka's always been kind of this this beacon of light that just appears at the right time now going through rebels and and going through even you know the mandalorian <clears throat> she she appears precisely at the right time as as a wizard would you know <laughs> but in in the book of Boba Fett when she appeared it also seemed to be a bit reluctantly because she was like so you've got this force sensitive kid and you want me to train him that's just not going to happen and I think that she's afraid of um leading someone down the wrong path oh yeah because of what happened with anakin without him without her being there yeah well it's it's that uh that clouded judgment right of really just not knowing like she's she's been um detached from the jedi order for such a long time and you know her thoughts are are not the ways of the order and if he's wanting to have it be that actual Jedi training, then yeah, she's, she's not the one to do it. Um, and, you know, in that scene in, in Mandalorian, that's when I was thinking, oh, are they going to, they're not going to bring in Luke Skywalker. Like they're going to bring in Ezra Bridger. Yeah. I think and that was so, a, nice, a nice fake out that they used for a lot of people. Just like one hundred percent. If it's if, around this time in the timeline, we know that Luke's off somewhere for a while, um, and Ezra would have been a uh, the only known valid choice at that point. Yeah, um, and I mean, even even him coming in on X wing, you know, I'm sitting there getting excited, and I'm like, wait. Is it Luke? No, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. It's uh, you've 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 seen Ezra be be around these kind of starships before. It's not going to be it, it's not going to be Luke. And then all of a sudden, it's glove, Luke. and you're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> but I think like to go back to like the reluctant the reluctancy that like Ahsoka had in uh, Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian, like a lot of it can be tied to things that happened in Rebels. Um, when Ahsoka uh, went from being fulcrum to a part of Phoenix Squadron. Um, like you have the whole thing with uh, her trying to help Kanan be a better teacher to Ezra and then what does Kanan do? Kanan goes and sacrifices himself and dies. And then you have Ezra doing his whole thing with Thrawn. Um, and you kind of get a sense that if you've watched, like, if you're not, if you haven't watched Rebels before, you're like, oh, why is she so, like, so close to Last Jedi Luke, like, not wanting to do this or that? And you have to think back, well, she went through some stuff in Rebels and that stuff made her not want to do that. Just like Luke went through the stuff with uh, Ben and not wanting to train anybody else after he turned into Kylo Ren. Not saying that those guys turned to the dark side, but like she lost because of her. She, and that that goes the whole thing. Like it's just that guilt that compounds from like Anakin becoming Darth Vader to losing Kanan to losing Ezra and just feeling like she possibly felt like she could have done more. Um, she could have been that Jedi Master that they needed to help raise them to another level. Uh, but instead, she just pushed that to the side because she didn't want that responsibility. If that makes sense. Well, the Jedi yeah, forms for sure. no attachments. She was like right in line with the Jedi. Yeah. Right? So I guess let's, let's jump into to Rebels a bit here. So you know when we when we first get into rebels um starting off on episode 1 you've got this smart aleck kid Ezra that's living on his own his parents um 
I'm were... just gonna say it. he's Star Wars Aladdin. And yep, you know, I 100%. can't I can't argue that point. <laughs> it's, it's a hard one to argue. Zeb even calls him a street rat. Yep. Oh wait, no, uh, one of the stormtroopers calls him a street rat. Oh yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, uh, you know, his parents are killed by the Empire. He's living on his own in, on, on Lafal. Um, he's stealing shipments, stealing food, you know, trying to trying to just make Keep his, one jump his ahead way of through the Sorry. galaxy, right? <laughs> I'm saying, next time, if you haven't watched Rebels, watch that first sequence with one jump ahead going in the background, and you'll be like, yeah, it's Aladdin. And then you'll get to the riff rap street rap. <laughs> if you time it just right, it's like Dark Side of the Moon and the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and so uh all of a sudden, you know, he he sees this other group stealing stealing some shipment, and he's just like, Well, hey. I'm just going to jump in here and go ahead and steal this while they're they're distracted and fighting off these guys and so he goes takes takes the cargo and then he's soon being chased by uh Sabine and uh Zeb and uh um wow name Kanan. uh Kanan. Kanan, thank you jeez uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh and through the unlikeliness of things you know Kanan ends up sensing something in in Ezra during this oh, during he's this a time. diamond in the rough and he's like yeah <laughs> I will <almost, I> <laughs> stop <eventually>. precisely it's got to burn off a couple first it's fine <laughs> but no it's it's just that sense of you know could this be someone that I'm supposed to be connected with? Right. Um, uh, and so they end up uh, going, uh, jumping onto the same ship to, to get out of uh, harm's way onto the, onto the ship, the ghost, uh, which is known as the specters uh, ship. <clears throat> um, and, you know, he's, Arguing back and forth with them doesn't really doesn't really want to to be here, um, and they're like, "Well, you're stuck with us until we can drop off these shipments, right?" And so they end up going doing their shipments, their delivery. He ends up getting <laughs> caught on a <laughs> taken away on a uh, imperial ship that they <laughs> accidentally found their way onto. Uh, and then they came back and saved him. Uh, and he's starting to realize that, like, that this this crew is an actual family, right? And he's missed that so much. And so Kanan kind of gives him the option of, you know, stay or go. Um, while he was on the ship, he found, uh, found and opened a holocron. Um, proving that he was a force sensitive user, and so he runs off. Kanan kind of goes after him and says, "Look, I know you got questions. I want to train you." Ends up joining the crew, <clears throat> and so the the early years, it's it's you know, <clears throat> Kanan initially hiding his identity, right. Because this is this is all after the Clone Wars, Jedi are still hidden. He doesn't even like use his lightsaber in the beginning. Well, let's it's... not forget that Bad Batch season one uh, shows Kanan and how Kanan survived Order sixty six. Yeah. Um. So there's a reason why he's hiding, uh, because he saw firsthand what happened to his master. Um. And just doesn't want that smoke. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Kanan had it had it rougher than than most going through that. I mean, having to literally watch his master get gunned down and 
still slip out and survive like um and so he's battling his own demons trying to be like well i i don't want that life but i do want that life like i'm still they're still fighting for good right the specters are are basically fighting as part of the rebel alliance even though it's it's not fully built up yet they don't really know what they're what they're fighting for even even with you know uh mon Matha, she comes up in this in the series a couple times and you know it's still very secretive that that she's on and and helping them with those things as we've uh we're able to see in um uh Endor. shoot Endor, thank you um and so it's 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 crazy seeing all these live actions and animated series like touch so close um right but yeah so you know ezra's growing throughout the season you know becomes his padawan eventually becomes a jedi knight um one of the um uh as as the rest of the team goes um for uh for rebels I, why is something playing on my TV behind me? I don't know. I was going to ask you about that. I was like, what just happened? I don't... It's the ghost in the window. It's literally... We're going to get sued. i got to turn my screen. <laughs> okay, well, I... Uh, fix this. Do you want to walk through James on the characters? Well, so one thing I want to say before uh, we move on to the characters and on the slide, um, I think that Kanan's Jedi reveal is probably my favorite reveal of a Jedi in all of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, because they like have a little code word for it, and he's like, Ezra's just like, "What does that mean?" or "What's that?" and he's like. Uh, or what's that secret? And he's like, Kate, I'm gonna let everybody in on the secret. Is your TV possessed? Apparently. I tell you, it's the ghost in the window. That's stuff, man. Um, but like, I think something to note too is like, Kanan always has his lightsaber on him, like, throughout every he never uses it, he always has it on him, just in two pieces on each side of him, so you take it apart, put it together. But he elects to use his blaster so he doesn't get found out as a Jedi. Blaster is um, better than any hokey ancient religion. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for your characters, you got Kanan. Uh, we've talked about him a little bit. With uh, you see him at first in uh, Bad Batch. Well, not first, but his first youngest appearance is Bad Batch season one. Uh, you only see him for like two minutes. Um, and then there's a few comic books as well that go into Kanan's past, um, which I actually think that somebody said that things happen differently in the comic book than they happen in Bad Batch. <laughs> <laughs> so continuity is a little iffy if you do both mediums. Uh, but then you have Hera the Twi'lek, uh, who's also the pilot slash captain of the ghost and dead um, mother. I mean, really, she does act as dead mother, space mom, well, space mom, and she mom. is a Twi'lek. She is a Twi'lek, um, <laughs> and she like has known war her whole life because of uh, she was raised on Rylos, and there were a bunch of battles on Rylos. Her mom was killed by a separatist army. Uh, and her dad, uh, Cham Sandula, is like the leader of the resistance on Rylos. Um, and what I love about her is uh, when you see her get into those episodes, if you go into Rebels and you watch the episodes where they go to Rylos to help her dad, and you see the struggle for her because her dad wants her to stay and fight the resistance there, but her whole thought is why... Like, I could help more than just one planet if we destroyed the Empire. Yeah. And this is even, this is before, like, uh, Phoenix Squadron and all that stuff. This is before 
the rebel alliance even started and her whole thought is if we take down the empire we could stop all of this so it kind of shows where her head's at when it comes to why she's in command why she uh became a leader in the rebellion why you hear them calling for uh why you hear them calling for her in rogue one on when they're on yavin four um but she's just such an amazing character. I love I love her so much. And uh, then you got my boy Chop, <laughs> who, in, in my opinion, has the highest kill count in Star Wars. <laughs> Fact. He is definitely an assassination he, droid, if there ever was one. There is no droid that I don't like I think that uh, Chopper is just listening to death metal and just like <laughs> taking names because like you see him going across screen and like I think my favorite thing about Chopper is just how emotive he is <laughs> like, I was watching one of the episodes today when uh, he gets captured by uh the Imperials, he gets captured by what's his name? Mutton Chops. What's Mutton Chops' name, Colin? Oh, uh, Agent... Callus. Callus, yes. Callus. He gets captured by Callus's team and uh, they... I don't know. This is when uh, Sabine and one of her friends who is in the Imperial Academy with her, they're trying to get an inform- informant droid. And her old That's friend right. captures Chopper, and they go to make a deal. And Chopper, so the friend goes and like is trying to wrangle Chopper so she can make a trade. And Chopper has his arms going like crazy, like "Come at me!" And she like pulls out a sword and like puts it in his face, and he's like, "Uh oh!" <laughs> <laughs> like just those, just those little things, like are just so amazing to me <laughs> that they like make Chopper say actual words every now and then. Yeah. Well, and like, uh, Ezra and Zeb and Chopper, they, they're they always, like, beating on each other. They're the three other stooges. in trouble. Yep, 100%. Three stooges all the way. Um, and I think that goes into Zeb. You know, Zeb, um, I believe the reason why he looks like that, from my understanding, that's what... Uh, Wookiees were supposed to look like originally. I believe that's what the uh, story behind his look is. How the story goes, uh, I believe you're correct. Yeah, so he's essentially a hairless Wookiee. Um, but he is, what is it, Lasat? Lasat. Is his race? Lasat. Uh, his race was wiped, pretty much wiped out by the Empire. Uh, he was a Agent captain. Agent Callus specifically. Agent Callus specifically. He killed a lot of the people with a uh, Lasat bow rifle, um, which is what Zeb's holding right there. Um, but he was a captain for the royal family. And when the Empire struck, he was knocked out by a bomb. When he came to, his pa- the palace was gone and everybody was he thought everybody was dead. Um, and I think one of my favorite things with Zeb when you go through Rebels is, you know, we were talking about Ahsoka's growth, but just Zeb's growth that you see from just this kind of out for myself, but I'm okay with these four. I don't want to bring Ezra in. Like, he didn't want to bring anybody else into his family besides Kane and Hera, um, Chopper and Sabine. Yeah. Um, but seeing him like grow to become like brothers with Ezra and then to see when they rescued some of his people from the empire and they found, uh, Lyrasan, a new home for them. Um, just seeing his growth all the way up to the end when, uh, sorry, there's going to be spoilers, Robert, uh, yeah. So, you know, at the end, you find out that Callus becomes Fulcrum after Ahsoka. And it's all because uh, 
Zeb saved Callus on, I can't remember which planet it was, but it was a nice planet. Uh, and Zeb essentially took care of Callus until the ghost crew came and picked him up, and then the Empire was right behind to pick Callus up, and that's when Callus was like, hey, he didn't have to save me, but he did. Uh, and then Callus kind of flips the switch there and starts becoming Fulcrum for the Rebels. Um, and then you have... Uh, at the end of the series, you have Zeb leading Callus to Lyrasan to show him that he didn't kill all of the Lasat uh, because that was weighing on Callus's mind the entire time. Like he, even though he was a bad guy, he was kind of the Zangief thing from Wreck It Ralph. He's a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. Um, but he felt really bad about the idea that he had wiped out an entire race. And just to find out that like Zeb took Callus to Lyrison and Callus stays there and helps them grow the planet uh, is just really amazing to see that growth for Zeb. Um, then finally you got Sabine, uh, the Mandalorian. Before Before you go there, I just want to let you know the reason why you didn't know the name of the planet is because it wasn't a planet at all. It was the comment? Genosis moon. Oh, that's right. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't say an idiot. <laughs> I think you were on the right path because they didn't really give us a planet name. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> you had to look deep for that. Um, actually, it's probably a quick Google search that I could have It done. was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you have Sabine Wren at the end there. Uh, and you couldn't find a picture of her without her helmet on. I Come wanted to show her. I wanted to show a picture of her with a dark saber. Sure, um, because because she was one of the holders of the dark saber, and eventually gave that over to so um, Sabine. Helmet was Sabine. Yes. I only have artist renditions in this book. Oh, I guess I could have just done this and be like, oh, look, it's a, it's a, oh, here look, that a helmet. Look at here. Which, she is and actually, the most colorful person ever. Yeah, I will say this. If you think that watching all of this is too much, I would definitely get this book. Uh, Women of the Galaxy by Amy Ratcliffe because they have little biographies of each of these amazing characters, Hera, Sabine, Ahsoka, uh, and then the even women of the all the women of the galaxy. galaxy. Yeah. Any relation uh, to, to Daniel? No, she's not. But she's also, she is a, she is a fantastic person. I've chatted with her a few times before. Yeah. Uh, she's one of our favorites to run into at conventions, mostly because my kid always gives her shade. Like, anytime she wants to get a picture with him, he's always like, nah. <laughs> I'm all right. But, yeah, no, it's a great book, great read. Um, but with Sabine, so she was, of course, born, raised on Mandalore. Um, she, uh, of course, this is all after the Mandalore War. So the Empire has control of Mandalore. They have an academy on Mandalore that uh, she attends. Uh, and she builds, I forget what it's called, but it's a giant weapon that essentially uh, the Empire could fandangle to uh, kind of imprison Mandalorians. And you see it used in Rebels. So she destroys it once, uh, and that's when she leaves and kind of meets with Hera and Kanan. They take her on adventures with her. Um and then later on in Rebels, uh, the Empire ends up building it again. And then they end up uh, imprisoning Sabine, making her work on it to enslave Mandalorians again, uh, to keep them in line. And in that episode, she eventually reverses the polarity, essentially, and gets it to focus on Stormtrooper armor. Uh, or the uh, 
material that Stormtrooper armor is built out of because it's not the same as Beskar or anything. And uh, she essentially tortures the crap out of everybody who was planning on imprisoning the Mandalorians uh, and blows up the machine again. Um, but something to know with Sabine, like you guys are saying, she's very colorful. She's the most colorful person in the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, her artwork is what becomes the Rebel Alliance logo, the uh, Phoenix Squadron, the little Phoenix and the Phoenix Squadron that becomes the Rebel Alliance logo. Um, she uses her colorful paints as explosives. Uh, so she'll paint you a pretty picture, but it'll blow your face off if you get too close. Um, one of my favorite things that she did was Zeb and Ezra stole a TIE fighter. <laughs> yes. And she painted it like one of my cousins would paint a lowrider in East L.A. Uh, it oh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but Sabine and Ezra form a really close bond and Ezra Ezra's sacrifice with Thrawn hits her really hard and Ezra kind of leaves her a little message like uh, uh, essentially in her mind it's a come find me message um, and at the end uh, and we actually see this in the live action Ahsoka trailer when Ahsoka see Sabine and Sabine standing in front of the mural that's uh, toward the end of Rebels in the animated series. So if you want to see the animated version of that, just watch the last episode of Rebels. Um, and yeah, and that's where I assume Ahsoka will kick off. But I also don't know if it's going to be I, a back and forth. TIE Fighter. Yeah. See what I mean? It's a TIE Fighter. <laughs> That is the most Latino TIE fighter I've ever seen. I feel like I'd hear the Lowrider song coming out of there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's the one thing that I'm interested in seeing with Ahsoka is are they going to are they gonna go into flashbacks? Because you don't see that a lot in Star Wars media, you don't see like comic books, you see it, but you don't see yeah. a lot in uh, the shows. I mean, the movies, I guess you see it now in the shows. Because uh, Boba Fett, they did the flashback to him being in the Sarlacc. Yeah. Um, but but I, think I think before they the Disney... a lot more. I think they had to establish more with the, with the TV shows to get them to stand on their own a little bit, rather than flashing back to do you remember when this great hit happened in this episode or in this movie? I mean, with Boba Fett, you can do it. But with the other shows, I think they're trying to, to show or trying to get them a little more standalone in their own right and, just, right. and keep their keep their um, internal continuity without having to refer back to, you know, it's in the universe, but you don't necessarily need to see you don't need to see the old Star Wars gang to know that it's in the Star Wars universe, so to speak. Right. The one thing that I would love for them to explore, though, in this show with maybe a flashback or two is uh, the Ahsoka book. Um, I think most of the growth that you see for Ahsoka from Clone Wars Season 7 to Fulcrum and Rebels is uh, in the book. Like, that's how she gets her white lightsaber she forges them after healing um, a kyber crystal that she took from a inquisitor that she killed um, and I just think that there's so many things in that book where uh, it's kind of that um, you see that she's still trying to help people but not as a Jedi no. So it's really it'd be really interesting to see that have portrayed get, in live have action. Have we gotten a have we gotten a, a anything telling us how many episodes we're getting out of this out of the, out of the first season yet? 
no. I haven't seen anything, but if it goes in line with pretty much everything else Disney Plus is doing, I would say eight episodes. Eight episodes. Six, six to eight. Eight? It is eight. It is, it's yep. confirmed eight. With two episodes coming off right on Day one. Third. Yep. Yep. I wish they all would just release on. Look, we can all find. We can all find. We can all right. <laughs> so one of the things that I know about the character that caused some not really minor uproar was the fact that Disney cast someone else as Ahsoka against fan casting, let's call it. Um, yeah. Ashley Eckstein had played. Ahsoka throughout Rebels and Clone War, but with the live action, and we've already seen um, in Book of Boba Fett, it's Rosario Rosario Dawson, who's working her way to becoming the next, uh, you know, three peat in in Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel. And I remember that that when it was first announced, I remember there was a lot of fan complaints about, well, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you do this? And I thought that it was very diplomatic of Ashley Eckstein to be like, I'm good with this. I, I'm doing my own things over here and Rosario will do a great job with it. Um, but I know that, you know, for a lot of people, Ahsoka will always be um, Ashley Eckstein. Well, and yeah. did they end up casting uh some of the voice actors um from rebels to play their characters or am i wrong? uh just thrawn just thrawn okay. i think it's just thrawn um because funny enough the guy who's playing ezra is the guy who played aladdin in the live action aladdin movie <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfortunate i don't need all the jokes now this is great not a not a <laughs> all <really> great <laughs> All I'm going to say is I've been saying this like Ezra is Star Wars Aladdin since season one first came out. And just the fact that they cast the live action Aladdin as Ezra just, I think, proved my point. And I think like... You're prescient. This is great. Yeah, like... Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so they have him as... Uh, Ezra and I think the problem is a lot of the voice actors like you have to look there's a lot of things you have to look at there's age uh, there's physical stature like Ashley Eckstein she's tiny Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna she's say. shorter than I am <laughs> so <laughs> she's uh, a powerful presence though she is she is an amazing person I you know uh there's so when we went to Star Wars Celebration a few years ago, we got to meet her, hang out with her. My kid did like uh, she just taught like an exercise class for kids, and they were just doing like all these moves that she came up with that were Star Wars related. And my kid almost took her out like three times because like she would do like this lunge thing, like you do like in fencing. And he just throws his body weight everywhere he goes. <laughs> and she's standing right in front of him and he like jumps and almost takes her out. And I'm just like, oh, oh this is this is just like the time you almost stabbed Jeremy Bullock with your lightsaber right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he just has a thing where he likes to take out celebrities. Sorry, celebrities Apparently. don't meet my kid. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's like, you know, there's physical limits that you had, like physical things you have to think about when it comes to the characters you look at ahsoka and rebels she's taller she's um she just has a different look than ashley Eckstein would be able to do because ashley Eckstein's done an ahsoka cosplay before and she did a really well teenage ahsoka cosplay um but i don't think that would translate to her being you know an adult middle aged middle aged Ahsoka. Yeah, no, and that's fair. I, I just remember, I just remember that there was a lot of uproar about that from the fan base. Yeah, and I think it's something that, like, I think a lot of the voice actors are like, "Hey, where we did our part, like, right? We would love to have a cameo or something, but 
we don't want to we don't want the main roles uh, but it'd be like you know can you imagine freddie prince jr coming out and doing a live action canaan like i'd love to see it but you see, i don't think be like it's wing commander all over again <laughs> But it's like one of those things where it's like, I'd love to see it, but I think somebody else could bring something to the character. Um, and I think that's what Ashley Eckstein's thought was. Like, I want to see what she can do with it. And she's going to do amazing things with it. So, yeah. Well, and that, me, that reminds me of, of, of one more thing to mention on, on Kanan, which is... Um, Kanan and Hera actually had a son together. Jason. Yeah. And so there is a little Kanan running around somewhere, whether he's force sensitive or not, who knows? I assume he is. He's another Anakin. He's a force sensitive pilot. <laughs> yep, exactly. Why are all force sensitive people pilots? What is this? So <laughs> The only one who hates doing it is Obi Wan. Obi Wan, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the the other big thing about Kanan, he ended up losing his eyesight in a, in a duel with Darth Maul. Yep. Darth Maul did him dirty and completely blinded him. Using Darth his blade Maul did what Darth eyes. Maul does. I mean, come yep. on. He's let's he was, face it. Maul is carrying around a little bit of anger. He got cut in half. First time we ever saw him. Yep. Then he became a spider. Then he became a spider. And then, then he became you know, a so... weird walking machine. <laughs> so he, he had some he had some anger issues to work out. That's all. Big time. He, he finally had regular legs. <laughs> you know, he had to stretch yep. those regular metal legs. And then Obi Wan killed him again. Great. In the most excellent way he could. <laughs> um I think one of the things, though, going back to Kanan real quick with his eyesight, um, that scene when he's on top of the fuel pods and he's holding back the flames, yeah. um, you see Ezra, was it Ezra? That, no, Hera gets off the ship yeah. and tries to go get Kanan and he, like, you know, puts his hand back to stop yeah. her. He has one hand going toward the fire and he throws Hera back into the, the ship so they can get away but the last thing she sees is his eyesight come back yep. and then he just <sighs> sacrificed I, I cry Christ every so time hard. I watch it every freaking time I am a grown oh man and I cry man. so much during that scene right? I've seen it 50 times and I cry every single time my son looked at me because, like, he doesn't understand that, like, Kanan died in that scene. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, he he died. Like, it's very emotional because that's the last time. And even now, he's he's he tells me, do you think we're going to see Kanan in... <laughs> <laughs> and that's, no! that's when I open... That's when I open the bottom, like <sighs> <laughs> dull the pain, I, dull the pain. I do hope that we'll see like a force ghost version of him eventually. I mean, you do get his voice should. in um, Rise of Skywalker. He's one yeah. of the voices that is talking to Ray. Yep. So you know he's around somewhere. Um, I hope that we do get to see. Jason grown up because if you look at it's such an interesting character design for when you think of a human and a twilight <laughs> like the only yeah. thing he has is like green hair and that's what yeah. he gets from Hera and it's like right but he looks pretty human besides the green hair. But you know Dave Floney's not just going to toss something in there and then forget about it, right? Like, Yeah, yeah, for he's sure. He's there. He's got to... It would be a waste if they didn't yeah. at least make some kind of an appearance. Um, for sure. But, but the, 
I don't know if like I am so excited. Like just seeing the cast when they were going through the trailer, Ahsoka looks like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, it's of of course it's going to get the haters who just want to hate on all things Star Wars after Disney. Yeah. I'm just saying, give it a chance before saying anything negative about it. Uh, Star the Wars only thing before Disney, even I mean. I mean, the only one, thing two, I three people still hate on. I think one, two, and three have actually aged well over time. Oh yeah, for sure. But the only thing I didn't like about the trailer was I don't think my boy Chopper got enough screen time. He should have had all the screen no, time. I'm just saying, you know, Empire's most wanted needs to be top <laughs> of the list. Like, I want somebody to come out with like an AI hip hop album of Chopper called Empire's (laughs) Most Wanted. (laughs) Like that's all I want. Straight out of Coruscant. It would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. And of course we can't go without talking about Grand Admiral Thrawn. Um, Grand Admiral Thrawn is the big bad of Rebels. Um, yes. He comes in in the last two seasons. Yes. Um, and uh, ends up kicking some serious butt. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn is known as the military strategist, tactical genius. He's always serving underneath Emperor Palpatine. He's basically the biggest, baddest Grand Admiral that you will ever seen your life um uh so he's question. of yeah so knowing the thrawn trilogy yep and what he did in that sorry in no air to the empire sorry knowing what he did there has that been completely moved to legends now or have they kind of integrated that to some degree so it's integrated to some degree i think that's what they're going with in yep. this and that's why they yep. mentioned that air to the empire thing um, because you look at, and I think they pulled a little bit from Heir to the Empire into the trilogy. Um, I haven't read Heir, Heir to the Empire in so long. Um, but if you look at the trilogy, like just to see how he came from, uh, just this stranded chiz guy on his home planet to the number one strategist in the Empire, like that whole arc is just amazing um and you do see that he has run-ins with anakin uh pre darth vader um in the trilogy Mm -hmm. uh because he uh there was a mission i haven't read the, the first book and so i think it's the first book there's a mission where he's fighting alongside the republic and the person he's fighting with is Anakin. And so later on in the trilogy, I think it's the third book, he's working side by side with Vader and he starts poking and prodding that he knows he's Anakin. And it becomes like a a toxic work environment for Vader because Thrawn's always just like throwing little jabs at him like, oh yeah, I remember when we were on this planet and Vader's like, that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Stop gaslighting me, bro. Like, <laughs> come on. Um, Don't make me force choke you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you do have like this connection and you see that a little bit in Rebels because they have Thrawn trying to take out you know, the Phoenix Squadron. Uh, I think there's trying to think do they does he interact with vader in this i don't think he interacts with vader at all no he doesn't no because vader does his thing vader fails at killing kanan and ezra so then thrawn comes in to clean up vader's mess oh we didn't mention that about ahsoka vader ends up killing ahsoka oh well or well he didn't really kill her there was like she got better what was it, bomb or <laughs> like she got smashed? So they were fighting on uh, what planet was it? I can't remember the planet. 
they were fighting on this Sith planet. Um, and they essentially were in a giant holocron that was a ship. Um, and uh, the, that's right. It was that it was that weapon that Darth Maul wanted Ezra to take him to because yep. Ezra could open the Sith holocron. Yep. Um. So there, and that's when Kanan gets blinded uh, by Maul. Um, because Ezra and Ahsoka are at the top of this pyramid thing and they're trying to uh, stop it because Maul had started it and then they're trying to stop it and you just see Vader come on the scene and uh, this, this always gets me because this came out, this episode came out like right before my birthday and it was right before uh, we went to Disneyland this year, that year, and my kid dressed up as Ezra at Disneyland and got to fight Darth Vader uh, at the uh, Jedi training. So for me, like this whole sequence, like just uh, every time I see him, it reminds I'm me of that Disneyland that trip. you got to do that with your son because they still haven't reopened that after COVID. Really? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> You have to go to Star Wars Celebration one of these days then. I know. Because they do it there too. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Um, but so Ezra and Ahsoka end up trying to fight Vader. Uh, Ezra gets pushed off the building uh, and he's running back to save Ahsoka and she does the Kanan thing where she like stops him and pushes him out of the way. And the last thing you see is uh, Vader and Ahsoka fighting, and the thing collapses on them. Uh, but before that collapses on him, Ahsoka does get in a shot, and it cuts off half of his mask, and she sees the Anakin and Vader thing. Uh, very similar to what you see in Obi-Wan uh, when he says the uh, uh, you didn't kill Anakin, I did. Uh, he has a very similar conversation with Ahsoka there, uh, but I think it's more of a uh, uh, you couldn't save him kind of thing, uh, and now you will die kind of, I think, something like that. Um, so the last thing you see, my dog's about to knock over my camera, um, the last thing you see is that building falling on Ahsoka, but as the episode ends, you see her walking down the staircase, and that's when everybody was like, Ahsoka's dead. Like, she's walking down into, like, this is supposed to represent her walking to her downfall or her death. And it's like, no, she's just walking down the stairs. Like, sometimes the elevator's out, you know? I have to take the stairs. <laughs> um, but, what is it? Two, like, a season and a half later, they do the World Between Worlds episode. Uh where essentially they go into time travel for, in the Star Wars universe. Uh, there is a certain Jedi temple where you could enter the Force, and it's essentially entering the time stream. So my, it'd be like entering uh, the Speed Force. Um, and... <laughs> Robert. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, no. It wasn't that. It, it really wasn't that. You said that they introduced time travel to Star Wars. They go to this... They go to this Jedi Temple, and there's a portal. The first thing in my head was actually the Guardian uh, of Forever in Star Trek. And that's so just like, no. So it wasn't, it wasn't the Speed Force reference. It was just where my head went with that. Okay. Um, but so being in that temple, um, you get your first glimpse of the uh, live action movies into the animated series because you have lines from. Um, I believe all three prequels, the original trilogy, and then you have lines from, uh, I think it's just Force Awakens. Yep. Um, so you have all those coming in, you hear different lines coming in, uh, and Ezra is able to see Vader and Ahsoka fighting, and wow. before the building collapses, Ezra pulls her into the force and essentially saves her life. Um, 
And his whole idea is, hey, I just saved you. We could save Kanan. And then she kind of tells him, if we save Kanan, everybody else dies. Kanan sacrificed himself so you could live. Because if there's no Kanan in that point, the whole fuel pod blows up, ship blows up, Harris, Sabine, Zeb, everyone's gone. So she kind of had to help Ezra deal with that fact that you can't save everybody. So it was a flash fact. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the line that she tells him is, I couldn't save my master and you can't save yours. It's a canon event. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Everyone loses their master. Um, But the interesting thing is, I thought that this point was going to lead into Rise of Skywalker. Because in that episode, Palpatine is waiting for them to be in that area because that's the only way Palpatine can enter. And he's using some Dathomirian like magic to see them inside the force. And so when I went into Rise of Skywalker thinking that Palpatine's behind everything, I was like, oh my God, they're going to say that it's the world between worlds. He got access to it. He time traveled and all this, and it's like, it's clones, and it's like, ugh. Well, I still liked it, but ugh, the world the between worlds thing would have been, right. yeah, the time <laughs> travel thing would have been so much better, but then they would have been like, there would have been people who don't watch the cartoons who have been like, hey, how did they do this? And then you'd have nerds like me be like, well, actually, there was this episode <laughs> of Rebels where... <laughs> oh, yes. But, yeah. Yeah, Great so, stuff. so throughout Rebels, you know, they've uh, they've gone through, they've overcome a lot. Grand Admiral Thrawn comes into play. Uh, they're they're basically trying to save the planet Lothal um, in this last ditch effort. They they don't have any support from the Rebel Alliance. They've tried and tried, but the Rebel Alliance just said, "Sorry, we have bigger it's, fish it's to fry. Too big of a risk for us." We, we've got all these other things that we're trying to do. We can't help you here. And so Ezra, um, you know, comes up with this other, other plan, ends up taking out one of the main huge factories, basically makes it into a bomb with the, the help of Sabine. Um, and <clears throat> eventually he's... Um, he gets squared onto a one-on-one with Grand Admiral Thrawn to where he has to leave and, and get off the planet to go to his ship in order to save everyone else. He has to surrender himself to Thrawn. Yeah. And so he surrenders himself with everyone else thinking, oh, he's not going to do it uh, or, or try to figure out other ways around it. Um, and he kind of he kind of does some toxic things where he's like, I won't surrender myself, but how about you guys go with this, uh, go create this plan, and I'll just like wait yeah. over here until you guys tell me what the plan is. Yeah. And then sneaks out through the vents like a street rat. <laughs> As he does. Uh, and then gets onto the ship. You know, he's having this, this last minute you know, trying to figure things out. Uh, He calls through the force to what we see in the Ahsoka series. Or was it, was it in Ahsoka? No, no. It was Uh, Ahsoka. It was in Mandalorian. You saw him in Mandalorian. Was it Mandalorian? Yeah. Saw him in Mandalorian. Mandalorian. You see, you see the um, whales. Purgle. Space whales, the Purgle, that are just flying as, uh, as you're going through hyperspace, right? Um, he met those on a gas planet uh, and ends up calling them, and they come in and start attacking these ships and uh, ends up taking them to the... to uh, ends up attaching onto the ships, and then all of a sudden, things are ripping apart, and the space... The space whales, the purgles, go into 
uh, hyperdrive and uh, take them to the unknown regions, basically. Um, and so that is the last that we've seen of Thrawn and Ezra is the Purgles taking them. Who knows where the heck they are? The now. unknown. It's the unknown. Unknown so, space. Yep. And so the final scenes that we see are of Ahsoka and Sabine getting together and saying, all right, let's go find him. And so that's where we kind of leave off at the end of Rebels of, all right, well, now it's this journey to find Ezra. But then they don't give us that in Rebels anymore. <clears throat> but it's that's okay. Bitter. You know, not better at all. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I want to know, though, is how did Thrawn and Ezra survive? Because the Purgle broke all the windows yeah. in the shuttle, and they're going through hyperspace with no windows. Well, can like, the Chiss breathe in outer space? No. <laughs> I don't think well, so. I don't think there's anything written that they can. Ezra, for sure, could only do it for a couple seconds. I don't know about that. Princess Leia and her, or General Leia, <laughs> sorry, and her little Mary Poppins. <laughs> Let me fly in the Last Jedi. Point. How did that go again? <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh you. My goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, uh, but but to be Jake, fair though, Jake was Rebels Jake so mad at me right now. <laughs> I think Rebels actually introduced Jedi being able to breathe in space uh, before Last Jedi uh, because Kanan does it first. Okay, but if they if the Purgle well, surrounded the shuttle, you said it took it into hyperspace. Yeah. I think their it, tendrils it, could have covered the windows. Well, I'm going to say they could have just, you know, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, a subspace bubble around the ship. Hmm. I mean, they they are able to, uh, I mean, they thrive in gas environments. What if they were able to take oxygen and fill up? I don't know. Look at you beat off science. <sighs> Who knows? Okay, but the only, <laughs> the only thing is, and this is sound really weird. If you watch the episode, their their tendrils all open up and they like light up and shoot into hyperspace. So let's say they're shooting gas, mm -hmm. like oxygen in. That means they're farting oxygen into the Fact. ship. Yes. Like I had to go there. I, it's gonna There's, be stinky for a little bit, but I mean they're alive. It's breathable. It's breathable air. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices to live in the Star Wars universe. Is that what that was? The the gas on that planet? Was it actually just these guys' farts? Probably. And it's probably oxygen rich. Too oxygen okay. rich. <laughs> and it takes the coldness of space to kind of dilute it enough for people <laughs> to breathe it. Yes. Listen, I'm no Bill Nye. But I will say only guy. goes down. Yes. Wow. Uh. <laughs> well, this has been educational on so many fronts. <laughs> so Anytime so you see the fronts. purgle, you're gonna be like oxygen farters. <laughs> oxygen fart and space whales. Let's uh, <laughs> go through my head now. So. Thank you so much. I was trying to find a way to relate it to the Akanti from, from the X-Men, but no, just oxygen, oxygen farting space whales now. <laughs> oh, all goodness. Of James. Thanks, James. I love it. <laughs> uh, I well, do what I can. I have no clue where they're going to go with this series other than Thrawn's there, Ezra's coming back. Lightsaber uh, fights. Lightsaber fights. There's a whole bunch of. Uh, are are these inquisitors? I'm assuming. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So they. So the problem with there can only be two, and there's already two, so they've got to be inquisitors. No, because right? they have. Yeah, they'd be inquisitors. They wouldn't be Sith, because uh, the inquisitors they had. 
nine, I think, total throughout. Five, yeah. yeah, but I think, like, if you look through, like, uh, Jedi Fallen Order up through Rebels, I think there's a total of nine. It yeah. might just be... Yeah, there's a lot. Um, Which a couple have supposedly already died, but they're back again, so... Cloning. Cloning. Or they didn't die like Darth Maul. And now they have robot legs. Oh, robot legs. Freaking robot legs. <laughs> That's all I want, because then I'm, I can be taller. I just really want them to come back as like at least a spider form at first. I mean, at well, least you know, earn the legs. You know, it was just a uh, failed experiment, the she spider was... spider mall. <laughs> He was so pitiful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and not only that, I think they extended his torso in that. Yes. Like, I think his torso is as tall as he would be as a person with legs. Uh-huh. And it's like, wait, but he had half of that cut off. So yeah. when they put well, they the legs on... They rebuilt it for Finnick Shand. They rebuilt Finnick Shand's torso. <laughs> yeah, but like, they're adding like a foot or two onto his torso. When you go in for plastic surgery, like, are you sure this is what you want? Yeah. Reconstruct, I'm sorry, reconstructive surgery. Just saying. Is this what you want? Are you sure this is what you want? <laughs> so you're saying I should go in and be like, I want to be like six foot tall, but like mostly torso and spider legs. Yep. I'm not saying that, that you should. I'm also not saying that you shouldn't. I'm, you know? <laughs> All right, next time you guys see me in person, I have spider legs and a six foot tall torso. Perfect. Just, just be prepared when I scream, you know, like, like bloody murder the first time I see you. It'll, it's, it'll be more just a visceral reaction. To like yeah. Get used to it. I mean, I'll probably end up like balding on the back of my head because, like, if I run, my whole body will go backwards and like drag on the pavement. But... I usually scream like that when I first see him in person all the time. So. <laughs> I'm just going to eat the new like Colin. That's us all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, no, but the show's going to be great. It's going to be great. We've got an okay cast. We'll see about Mr. Aladdin, but uh, I'm excited for the others. So, uh, give it, but before we wrap that, um, given your history with it, what one thing would either of you want to see out of this specifically? One, and just one. Oh, I... what what gap would you like to see them fill in, or what direction would you like to see them go? I, I mean, because that there's, I, I feel like we get a lot of gaps filled in when it comes to Ahsoka and Sabine and Hera, just from like context clues and comic books. When it comes in between, like from Rebels through. Uh, even like uh, what is it? Is it at least in the Battle of Endor? Because you know that the ghost is in the Battle of Endor because Harris is piloting the ghost in the Battle of Endor. Mm-hmm. Um, so my whole thing is, I just want to know more about what's happened with Ezra and Thrawn. Like okay. if they survived, they obviously yeah. had to survive together. Um. And if they survive together, why aren't they together at this point? Like, why they are they emotional fallout? Yeah. Listen, I've been there too. <laughs> they just need some good counseling, uh, and they can get back on the right track. Yeah. Because I mean, the question is, like, did they? Did he try to imprison Thrawn at that point? I mean, yeah. Because because when they um, at the end, I mean. Thrawn's basically held back by all these tentacles of of um, the space Purgles. whales, the purgles, uh, <laughs> the oxygen uh, farting space whales. So did did they keep hold and like he found a place to like put them, or or did he escape in that moment and and run? Yeah. Like what what happened to to get to this point? Are are these Sith Inquisitors just going to find them on a rebel ship? And that's well, and they were. We have think, that scene in the trailer where the guys killing them off, like like Darth Vader does. 
Well, and I think that they were on. So maybe it's the maybe the Rebel Alliance finds them, and that's how they get separated. Is the Inquisitors set Thrawn free, and then do do something with Ezra because he's on the ship. Maybe he's healing somewhere. Because if you remember, uh, Thrawn shoots Ezra. Yeah, he is and right. that's why he has to have the Purgle hold on to him because he can't hold them with the Force anymore. Yep. Um. So maybe Ezra is still healing from that somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. It, I, that's the one thing that I'd really love to see. And of course, you know, I love Sabine, so I want to see. I know you said one thing, but I want to see more of Sabine's story. Yeah. No, I'm with I'm with you on both counts there. Um, I am excited to see more of Ahsoka, and if she. I don't think she'd ever head back to the Jedi ways, but I just want to see her fulfill her, her last mission of finding Ezra and yeah, whatever that ends up to. I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like there's a lot of missing gaps to the general story of rebels. Right. Outside of just where they ended. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't speaking such about rebels the gaps there. It's, with Ahsoka's story. Yeah. Um, well, if you go Ahsoka's story, like I said earlier with the books, like I'd want to, I'd want, because not a lot of people read the book. Um, and I think it's important for her character arc, for people to see what she went through um, after she left the Jedi order up until she became Fulcrum. Um, even not even the whole book, just like, you know, there's uh, the scene. There's a scene in the book when the Inquisitors realize that she's on this planet, and they kill all the farmers on the planet, and that leads Ahsoka to being like, "I can't hide. I just have to go at this and beat these guys." And then she, you know, kills them, takes their crystals, makes her white lightsabers. Um, I think that that's something for that a lot of people should see if they haven't read the book. Because uh, I think that's a big part of her realizing that she just can't hide and she has to do something, even if it's just, you know, being uh, being Fulcrum for the Rebel Alliance for a little bit before joining Phoenix Squadron. Um, but that's the one thing from Ahsoka that I want to see. Anything else, I just want to see Chopper with some spinner rims and you know maybe get a bandana on him uh maybe carry a glock uh make it a little bit easier for him to take down some stormtroopers and stuff yeah i think he needs his own built-in kyber crystal oh no that's too much <laughs> that's so there, is a line. The line. There, there is a line good to know Good to know. Listen, There's a line there. So he does have that little satellite dish on the top. If you give him a kyber crystal, he's just going to be a mini Death Star walking around. Just being like, <laughs> be like, hey, I don't like that paint color. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, that's too dangerous. Wow. Chopper with a gun? Okay. Chopper with a kyber crystal? I have nothing to follow it up with. At all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. Okay. Well, on that note, <laughs> I do you want to share this one one image real quick? Uh someone released on Reddit um a what to watch list, which I think was actually uh perfect. Uh, and so kind of the first things to watch tales of, uh, of the Jedi, which is basically, uh, an animated, uh, series on, um, uh, there's two episodes, episode one and episode five that kind of take you through her life as a younger child, even as, uh, as a baby in the first one. Um, and then the Clone Wars, uh, season one, episode 19, season two, episode six, season three, 21 through 22, season five, 17 through 20. Uh, and then 
uh, season seven, nine through 12. Uh, and then picking up Tales of the Jedi again on episode six. Um, and then Rebels, uh, and I'll just post these in the, the show description instead of reading them all off, but um, there's several key episodes within within Rebels to watch as well. Um, and then the Thrawn uh, book trilogy by Timothy John uh, Zahn, uh, which is uh, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last uh, Command. Which were a, an amazing trilogy. Yes. If you're a Thrawn fan. And, well, and I would also throw in there the newest trilogies. Um, the new Thrawn trilogy? Yeah. Because that's where you get the him with Anakin stuff. Um, mm. But I do think, like, and I think Timothy Zahn wrote those ones too. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think that's why they're like, people aren't so like, oh, well, he didn't, like, I think he wrote those. I think I have, oh, no, nope, I don't have those ones. <sighs> I think I had the audible version of them. Which means I was working at library, Target. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Throwing new books. Um... I could swear I had one series. One. Uh, Thrawn Ascendancy book series, which is all by Timothy. Yep. Um, Chaos Rising, Greater Good, and Lesser Evil. The greater Good. Great books. And these were as of last year. So, check them out. Let us know what you guys think, what you guys are expecting to see from the series. Uh, join us in all of our fun discussions uh, live in our Discord by going to discord.ageofgeek.com. Uh, you can find us anywhere and everywhere. Oh, thank you, Mr. Robert, for the link. Wait, where is Happy it? to have it. Right down there. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's know what you think. Uh, James, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, I, I don't know, it's weird because, like, I was telling Colin earlier that my podcast disbanded, so uh, I, think you just I won't be on there. Anymore. 2.0, yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's just my name backwards, Samaj underscore Adartse. Uh, Twitter, Nerdy at Home Dad. Uh, threads is a thing now. I'm on there. I don't know. I think my name is... Good old Thread. Uh, my name backwards, yeah. You were the uh, only one who commented on my thread. I did? Which thread? Yeah. Uh, on, on my Age of Geek thread about... Uh, if you could be any, oh yeah, uh, any like science, sci, sci-fi like fantasy character, uh, or no, who, who would you want to be like your sidekick or something? I can't remember. Yeah, it was which two uh, sci-fi characters would you have, uh, pretty much as your sidekicks? And I said Cassian and I forget who else. Yeah. The Latinos of Star Wars. So I'd do Poe and Cassian. <laughs> yes. That way we could be like, get Chopper with us. We'll call him Cholo <laughs> Chopper. It'd be great. Oh my God. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. All right. uh, I'm going to get canceled. Until next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. <ya. laughs>